In this video, I am going to show you Einstein's biggest blunder. And it only requires basic math of distance equals rate times time. It's real easy to understand. We are going to look at the fundamentals or the first principles that Einstein used to derive his theory of special relativity. Let's let Elon Musk describe the importance of using first principles thinking. I think it's also important to reason from first principles rather than by analogy. But first principles is kind of a physics way of looking at the world. And what that really means is you kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths and, and say, okay, what are we sure is true or, or as sure as possible is true? And then reason up from there. Absolute space and absolute time are the fundamental or first principles of what is known as classical physics or Newtonian mechanics. Einstein is taking the opposite position saying that there's no absolute space and no absolute time. This would give him his own physics. The physics of relative space and relative time. In Einstein's 1905 paper, he gets rid of absolute space by saying it is not required, and he gets rid of absolute time by claiming that there's something called relative simultaneity. The first principle's equation of motion that Einstein uses to derive his theory of relativity is distance, rate, and time. We are going to focus on the first principle's equation of distance equals rate times time to see how Einstein gets rid of absolute time. So Einstein's theory of relativity does not have a concept of absolute time because there is a relativity of simultaneity. So what does that mean? Two events are simultaneous when they happen at the same time. And let's say that this works fine when you're standing still watching these events unfold. But if you are moving when these events occur, then the simultaneous events will happen in your past or in your future. What? Here we are stationary and watching a simultaneous event cause inelastic deformation, otherwise known as a train wreck. And speaking of a train wreck, when you apply relative simultaneity to this scenario, people that are moving by us will see this event happen at a different time in their lives. And not just apparently or like some kind of illusion, but Einstein says this is real. The moving observers will somehow make a copy of this event and see the train cars crumpling up at a completely different time. Einstein creates the concept of relative simultaneity in section 2 of his paper. And these are the equations that Einstein uses to abolish absolute time. These are just distance equals rate times time equations. And they describe the forward half cycle and the back half cycle of this animation. So based on the section 2 word problem that Einstein created, this is the forward half cycle equation and this is the backward half cycle equation. Now c is the speed of light constant here, but Einstein seems to be changing it using a minus velocity or a plus velocity. This is a bit misleading, so we need to rearrange these equations so that the rate is just the constant speed of light. You can pause this page and look through the rearranging algebra, but now we have just the speed of light where the rate should be. And with the rearranged equations, we can see that this v is actually a distance. Now we can see that these two equations are just showing us a change in distance because the v here is just velocity or meters per second and then this change in time is just a second and they cancel out so we just have meters plus meters. Now how in the world does a change in distance in the equation of distance equals rate times time 
abolish absolute time. From a first principles perspective, it does seem a bit ridiculous. And if it was true, this alone would be worth a Nobel Prize. Something's wrong here. So then what is it that Einstein concludes from these equations? Observers moving with the rod would thus find the two clocks were not synchronous. So that would mean that this time does not equal this time, and it's because of the velocity of this moving rod. While observers in the stationary system would declare the clocks to be synchronous, so in other words, these would be equal. Let's take another look at this. We have the stationary light source and the stationary observer and then the moving rod. The light travels one distance and then it travels a second distance and they're not the same. And we fully understand that from these equations where light is traveling two different distances. And of course, if light is traveling at a constant speed but you're measuring two different distances, this time is going to be different than this time. I mean, that makes complete sense. If we let the light go back to the stationary origin, then of course it's traveled the same distance in the forward leg and the backward leg, and the timing is perfectly synced. Ah, I think I see what he's trying to do here. Why would Einstein change the constant velocity of light when he declares it right here? Okay, watch. Imagine that you're inside this train car moving and you're looking at this light pulse. You see it travel the full length of the train car and then bounce back to the other full length of the train car. And then you get the full perspective from someone standing on the sidewalk. Sneaky, sneaky Albert. So the result is if you want the length of the moving rod to stay consistent, then you must change the speed of light. If you want the speed of light constant, then there must be a distance change. You can't have it both ways at the same time. I mean, that's ridiculous. Now, maybe someone will say he's using the principle of relativity to come up with that conclusion. And that's just not correct because it would be the most half-assed implementation of the principle of relativity. And let me show you. Now, you have the stationary emitting source, but from the moving observer's perspective, you get a different result. Now, what would you do to implement the principle of relativity in this scenario? Basically, this just means invert the situation. If your emitting source is stationary during the first scenario, what will happen when you implement the principle of relativity? You got it. The emitting source will switch to the moving frame. And now it's the stationary frame that gets a different result than what the emitting source is producing. Again, from first principles, if you want the length of the moving rod to stay the same and you require that the speed of light stays constant, then this time will equal this time. But if you want the time of each of these cycles to be different and the length of the moving rod to stay the same, just like Einstein is claiming, then you must change the speed of light. And we all know that that would kill this theory. And Einstein's conclusion here is only based upon the emitting light source being in the stationary system but being applied to the moving rod. And it's the moving rod that actually creates the distance change. And this is the paragraph where he abolishes absolute time based 
on a distance change. He's just wrong. But if he's wrong, then how does he use first principles to derive the moving clock that relativity depends on? First, he names the moving clock the Greek letter tau. Then the stationary clocks are synced along with the moving clocks being synced. He runs the distance equals rate times time animation that we are familiar with and then makes this claim. And here it is in visual form. So now we are in the moving system and distance equals rate times time seems to be working perfectly which completely contradicts this distance equals rate times time equation where he says observers moving with the moving rod would thus find that the two clocks don't synchronize. So this is different than this. And now magically it's working. The forward time equals the back time when moving. But you already know why it's working. Einstein snuck the emitting source into the moving system. So now we have this exact scenario where the moving emitting source leaves the stationary observer behind. And here is the animation. So you can see this forward cycle distance change from the stationary coordinate system to the moving X prime. It's still the same distance change problem that we had before. Let's look again. We are in the moving coordinate system and we leave the stationary system behind. And here are the equations in distance equals rate times time form. And the old distance of RAB has basically just changed to this. And we still have the same problem of the distance change. So how does Einstein use these first principles to create the derivation of the moving clock? It's simple. He changes the speed of light in the moving clock function. So Einstein changes the rate in distance equals rate times time, and that conflicts with his principle of the constancy of the velocity of light. And also moving the emitting light source to the moving frame directly conflicts with his statement that moving observers do not see the synchronous times. So as an experiment I posted this on Reddit which is just a small version of Einstein's biggest blunder. How do you deal with this distance change without messing with the speed of light and using first principles? So after 7,000 views and a bunch of comments, the answer was basically, you can't. The Einstein defenders said that you can't get to relativity using distance equals rate times time. Now that's crazy because I don't think they realize that they're siding with me. I mean, do they know that Einstein has claimed to derive relativity from distance equals rate times time? Well, I guess you could still move forward with Einstein relativity. You just have to realize that you believe that absolute time is wrong. You are postulating or assuming that relative time is fundamental to the universe. And after 115 years, there has never been an experiment that proves Einstein's special relativity. And when I say Einstein's special relativity is pseudoscience, I'm not just throwing out some subjective slur. I am stating that the majority of the world has mistakenly regarded Einstein's special relativity as being based on the scientific method. All of our experimental data sets an at-rest frame. And setting this at-rest frame contradicts Einstein's special relativity. And a quick thanks to our science and math moderators over at Reddit for inspiring this video. Thanks for watching.